Hi, I'm Pete Scargill, and I'm going to show you how to make use of X and Y coordinates inside a canvas. A couple of things. First of all, what is an HTML5 canvas? Well, it's this rectangle down here. It's a kind of a drawing area that you can draw lines and circles and text and arcs and all sorts without using Flash. It's absolutely wonderful, and it's part of the HTML5 standard. We'll go into that in a second. What started me off doing this? Well, let me show you this. The bottom item here is a little dial that I've made. Uh, it's for use with Node Red. It's written in JavaScript using Canvas. Uh, it has a couple of dials and it has a couple of set points. And I can get the dials to move around and do whatever I want. Uh, but I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could just, instead of having set buttons, if I could just click inside this arc to say set the temperature. And I started thinking about that. I hate maths. I started thinking, well, how can I do that? Kind of build up, given that I can get the mouse core, the mouse position, X and Y, what do I do? Build up a table of all the places where the mouse could be in there. And I thought, no, messy. So I went back uh, with the help from a friend to simple high school maths. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to show you how you can see where you are angle wise in that arc and not only that but make sure you're in the arc and not out of it somewhere down here okay so in these four windows we have top left html bottom left css top right javascript bottom right the result let's concentrate on the bottom right first so there's our square you can see there are some values moving around here as i move the mouse when i move the mouse outside of the square nothing happens and there's a little circle there just for uh, just so you know where the center of the square is. So if I move the mouse way up to the left, you'll see that the X and Y coordinates go down pretty much to zero. As I move the mouse across, you'll see that the X coordinate increases all the way up to 300. And as I move down, the Y coordinate goes up uh, all the way up to 350, which is the size of our canvas. In addition, you'll notice the degrees. Apparently, convention has it that when you're measuring degrees, you start over at the right and you are anti-clockwise. So that's what I've done. Notice the degrees is near enough zero there. And as I go anti-clockwise in a circle, they hit 90 degrees. They go all the way up. The degrees go up to 180 and then all the way up to 270 and all the way up to 360. So with the degrees, it doesn't really matter how far in you are. If you were capable of doing this in a straight line, it wouldn't. Um, it's the actual angle compared to the center. Finally, over on the right is distance. That is the straight line distance from the center out to the mouse. Again, angle is irrelevant. It's the distance from the center out to the mouse. So between the ability to get the arc and the ability to tell if I'm in within the reaches, the top and bottom of the arch with distance, then I can get the calculations to do whatever I want. And that's what this is about. And it's simple. So let's take a look, first of all, the canvas. The canvas, I've chosen to call it my canvas. Could have called it anything I like. All I need to know is its width and height. So that lays down a block in the working area here. Wouldn't be much use if I couldn't see it. So the CSS, which refers to my canvas, uh, sets a background color. So we've got a gray block. At that point, it doesn't do anything. That's where the JavaScript comes in. There looks like there's a little bit of JavaScript, but actually there's very little because a lot of it is just part of the demonstration or comments. So uh, incidentally, you can access this. I'll give you the link. You can go in here and have a have a tinker around. You might want to change the size of the canvas to 350. Oh, and magically it's changed 550. All right. So it's really easy to interact with this stuff. Let's just leave it at 350 square. All right, so let's have a look at the code. There's a couple of lines here which might seem a bit odd, but you really don't. You just need to accept that you, have, that you need them. The first thing you need to do is get a handle on the canvas. So the canvas is called My Canvas. I'm making a handle called The Canvas. And I get that from Document. Get Element by ID on My Canvas. 
But the only use I have for that is getting the size uh, coordinates out of it so that I don't have to refer to 350 and 350 all the way through my code. So uh, from that, I can get the canvas width and the canvas height divided by two and give myself two very useful variables, CX and CY, i.e. the center coordinates of this shape. I won't call it a square, this shape. So if I alter width and height, these will be updated. Okay, so I've got that now. Then I need to get what's called the context. And, well, it is fairly complicated, but it really, it's irrelevant. All you need to know is there's a gadget called CTX, which you can now use, an object called CTX, which you can now use throughout the rest of this code. It could be called anything you like. You don't have to call it CTX. You don't have to call those CX and CY. All right, so it's the context of the canvas, which we've defined up here. For the rest of this demo, the font used in here will be 12 point Helvetica. It could be 2 point Helvetica, which you can see that tiny little text there. Now, well, let's make it 14. Isn't it great to be able to interact with the code like this? And the text align is center. That means if I start drawing text here, it'll move either side, um, which is great if you're doing something like this where the width is varying all the time. You just start writing a text in the middle and it moves either way. Right, so I'm going to need a function which will get the mouse position from the system, and that's this function. Other than passing it the name of the canvas, um, that's that's all you do. Everything else, you just end up with it's uh, whatever I call uh, the result of that function. Dot x dot y will be my x and y. You need a listener. The listener will sit there and come back when the mouse moves. It could be on mouse up or on mouse down. I've chosen to use mouse move. You can change that. Of the canvas again. Add a listener to the canvas on mouse move. So when the mouse moves within our rectangle, every time, every change, this function gets called. The first thing it does is call that function that gets our mouse position into an object called M. So we now have two things that are useful, mx, m.x, and m.y. That's the mouse x and the mouse y. And that's all we use that for. The next bit is simple once you remember your high school maths. This block here, right, let me first of all, let's go back to our picture. How do we get the angle no matter where we are? Well, the simplest way is to think of this square as four squares. And in each square, you will have a right angle triangle, if you like, between your mouse in that center. So if we're up here, right angle triangle back to the center. Therefore, you can calculate the angle. Same with this square. Let's say the mouse is up there. Right angle triangle tells you the angle of the mouse. Same with the other four. So I have four possibilities here, which are calculated by is the mouse greater than, uh, is the mouse x greater than the, the center of the square, or is it less, and is the y greater than the center or less. So there are four almost identical calls. Um, math floor just turns whatever the result is into an indicator, otherwise you'd have a very long floating point number. Math a tan is doing the work here, so obviously Left-hand corner, you'll get a value of 0 and 90. You'll get a value of 0 and 90 in each of the corners. So you have to add something or subtract something here. 360 plus, 180 plus to the minus of that, etc., etc., Gives you 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, 270 to 360. So at this point, a variable I choose to call pause has the degrees in from 0 to 360. 
dead simple. One more item to go, the distance. Well, that's simple. Uh, what do we call it in school? Uh, A squared equals B squared plus C squared. So you need the square root of TX squared plus TY squared. And again, get rid of any floating point. TD is the distance from the center to the mouse. And that's it. All right, the rest is just for the purpose of presentation. Uh, before we change any of this, we need to clear the screen to get rid of previous text. That's that one. We need to move to the center. We need to draw a little circle in pink. Because I like nice colored text, we have a little gradient and fill text with this slot, which is what you see there. And that's it. There is no more. So as you can see, take away the comments, take away the stuff for this presentation, and you've just basically got half a dozen lines of code or so to, um, to get that information, which you can then use in your project. I hope this was useful. There's lots about dials, and gauges, and LCDs on the blog. The information is up in front of you uh, right now, uh, together with a link to uh, this live weave so you can have a tinker. Thanks for looking in.